guys, and thanks for watching. Jesse and Luca. Why are you being so sleepy always? They're going to think that's all you do. Welcome to my March favorites video, which is also my very first favorites video, so I appreciate you being here. I've watched a few different favorites videos, and I wanted to do it because I wanted to share those things with you that I get to liking every month. But what I didn't want to do is just make it all about buying or like whatever the brand new thing is for March, you have to go out and get it because I don't really believe in that and I don't want you guys to feel like that's what you have to do. So I am going to talk about a few beauty items, but I'm also just going to talk about some books that I'm into and some other stuff. So it's not just all about shopping and spending money. <laughs> if you guys watch my book club video, you'll know that we're reading Divergent and you're welcome to join and please click here if you want to watch it. Um, so we're reading the first one and we'll be talking about it shortly. I am waiting for the second one, but this month I'm definitely into the Divergent series. My sister and I are all about it and she got me into it and we basically just talk about it and watch all the previews that come on <laughs> for the movie. So this is a really great book and you can see me talk more about it in my book club video. While I'm waiting to get the second Divergent book from my sister, I'm reading this biography of George Sand, who you might notice looks like a woman because she is a woman. Uh, her name was actually Aurora Dupont, and she was a French writer in the 1800s. She became France's best-selling writer, and she smoked cigars, she cross-dressed, she had tons of affairs, and she was a brilliant, brilliant writer, and just lived a really interesting life. So this is a biography about her by Belinda Jack, and the way that I found her actually was um, mentioned in a Boardwalk Empire episode, and somebody quoted, a man quoted George Sand, and then, and then a woman said, well, did you know that he is really a woman? And um, so I thought, well, that sounds like an interesting story of a writer. So I'm a little more than halfway through. But if you're into writing and French history, that's a really good one because she also was involved with a lot of really interesting people at that time. James downloaded the audiobook of the second book in the series of The Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind, which I talked to you guys about before. So we're on to the second book, and I'm really excited for that one too, but I can't show you it since it's an audiobook. Who knows what this is? No, it's not old finger paints that's left in a jar. It is juice. <laughs> I saved the juice that I made this morning because I wasn't quite done with it, so I thought I'd show you guys because I got my mom's old juicer out of storage and I've just this month started making a lot of carrot juice and um, this is a mixture of carrot, grape, and ginger, which makes it a little bit spicy and it's just so delicious and I love having fresh juice. It's so good for you. You can really feel how healthy it is for you because it's just such a difference between something that's been sitting in a bottle for you don't even know how long, to something that you just made yourself that morning. And it's exciting because you can make lots of different combinations and kind of play around with it. So that is something that I'm really enjoying doing. What are you looking at? Too spicy for you? Okay. And at many grocery stores you can get or you can ask them to order for you a really huge bag of organic carrots and it's not very expensive so you can have a huge bag because it takes to make about two cups of juice for James and I this morning it took uh, at least 10 big carrots um, plus the grapes plus the ginger so it takes a lot of carrots. The other thing in the food world that I've been loving is red zinger tea. I would show you an organic one if I could have found one but I couldn't so um, I do love this one except that it's not organic. But Red Zinger tea is made from hibiscus flowers. Oh, babe! Yeah? Will you hand me the hibiscus flowers? Thanks! <laughs> You've been waiting to say that. <laughs> the character in Terry Goodkind's book is always saying, Bags! 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 So James has been waiting for me. To ask for something so he could say it. Bags. 
bangs, I hate this. Mm -hmm. Red Singer tea is made from dried hibiscus flowers. I've been drying some out myself. I haven't tried to make it myself yet because... Bags. <laughs> you freak. He went outside to the other window. What's he doing? You guys should go play. So I haven't tried to make it myself yet, but these are the dried flowers. They are everywhere in Florida. I don't know if you guys have them, but the you might usually, these ones are pink, but usually they're bright red. They also have yellow and like a peachish color. Ingredient in red zinger tea is hibiscus, and then it also has rose hips, West Indian lemongrass, peppermint, orange peel, licorice, lemon verbena, and wild cherry bark. So there's no caffeine in it, but I love it because, like the name says, zinger. It just has that, like, zing to it that <laughs> wakes you up. And what I love to do is put lemon in it. I'm a southern girl, and I have to have cold sweet tea in the fridge. So since regular sweet tea usually has caffeine and it has a lot of sugar in it, I've been making up the red zinger to be cold tea and you can sweeten it with sugar if that's what you have or you can use honey or agave and then I'll make up a gallon of that and squeeze at least a half of a lemon or a whole lemon into it and it's just super refreshing and delicious. People were saying on my dating advice video that they didn't know that I was funny <laughs> and sometimes I guess it, Luca's like me like we are just mellow and just normal and we don't give away the fact that we're super weird. Why are you doing that? Come here. Alright, so what's up next? Scents. You love scents. Dead squirrels. Go on. So everything I've been really inspired by this month- ooh, I've slobbed on my face. <laughs> Everything I've been inspired by is sort of springtime, spring cleaning, refreshing, and just enjoying the sunshine. When I do any type of cleaning, the first thing I do is light candles because it feels like there's a little bit of work that you don't have to do because it's just giving a beautiful little light and it's keeping you company and it's going to make everything smell good while you're working. So I love to do that and I go through candles really fast. I was out of mostly all of my winter, holiday, pumpkin, and cinnamon type of candles. When I was at Walmart the other day, which I don't really like supporting Walmart, but that's where I was and I wanted to get some candles. So even though I'm going to link all of the items down below in the info box, specifically about the candles, I love the scent, but I'm not necessarily suggesting that you give your money to Walmart. So I really like scents that are sort of warm and snuggly, but I didn't want it to be really holiday and winter. I wanted something that was new for spring. So I found these that are, this one's soft cashmere and amber, and I love amber. My favorite candle is from Target, which is an amber candle. And the other scent, which I love, but all they had it in was tea lights, is called Warm Rustic Woods. But if you're looking for something that isn't too Christmassy, but it's still really warm and snuggly, anything that has to do with woods or it sort of seems like it's a little bit more of a masculine scent, those are really good for spring. And then amber, this one's soft cashmere amber like I said, but there are a lot of combinations of amber with other scents and you can do vanilla and amber and it's just a really lovely warm and sensual smell, but it also makes your house smell really clean. Ah. Continuing on with the spring scents. I am loving the Lavender Dr. Bronner's. I love lavender so much, it's just my favorite smell. I was taught by my mom to use lavender oil or lavender lotion if you can't go to sleep, so I always have a lavender lotion right by my bed in case I need a little bit of that lavender scent to help me drift off. So this is the Lavender Dr. Bronner's soap, if you guys don't know what it is. It is a great fair trade, organic, and inexpensive soap that's made by a seemingly a little bit crazy person because there's all this writing which is kind of famous all over it. They make several different scents and all of them are really clean smelling but I just love the lavender because it's just springtime and delicious. So I've been using this to mix into my hand soaps which I will show you how to do on Friday. My two beauty faves recently have been this, well it's not, it is a fave but it's sort of out of necessity. So I dropped my hair straightener on my foot and it hurt like the dickens and 
after a few days, it actually turned into a pretty bad scab. So I've been using this, which is the Burt's Bees Baby Bee. It's called Multi-Purpose Ointment. It's similar to a Vaseline or petroleum jelly, but it's made without petroleum. I also like another one that's made without petroleum called Alba Unpetroleum Jelly. The good thing about this one is since it is the Baby Bee product, they have it at most drugstores and even grocery stores because it's in the baby section. So sometimes these more natural things, they're difficult to find, but this one, because I guess it's popular for babies, <laughs> it's not hard to find. So it's basically just a Vaseline type thing. I actually have it on my lips right now. I'm gonna put some more. Whenever I look at a product, the first thing I do is look at the ingredients because I don't want to let the packaging and the idea of what they're trying to sell me just take me in because I want to know what is actually in it. So the ingredients are castor oil, coconut oil, beeswax, hydrogenated castor oil. There is some fragrance in this one, so if you're sensitive to that, be careful. It just smells kind of like gentle baby. <laughs> Shea butter. Uh, something seed oil that I don't know how to read, soybean oil, sweet almond oil, jojoba butter, vitamin E, tocopherol, which is vitamin E. But it does say that the fragrance is natural. It doesn't say what it is, but it says that it's natural. So I've been using that to try to heal my burn from my stupid mistake of dropping my flat iron and kind of breaking it a little bit too. This is good for so many things. Castor oil like I said, that's the main ingredient, and castor oil is really good for helping your eyebrows grow or your eyelashes grow. You can also use it to take off your eye makeup, and then you'll already have applied your castor oil to help them grow. I don't do that all the time because it's very thick, it's just like Vaseline, but sometimes it is nice to just remove all your makeup with a coat of it, and then you'll just feel how moisturized your skin is. Want to see my burn? It's like a V, so I can't wear flip-flops. There. There. Also, in the realm of beauty, I love... This is Aperitif by Essie, and it's on my nails right now, as you can see. I love it for almost any time, but especially for spring, it's kind of nice when everything has been dark, and then it's just like, you know what? I'm wearing some freaking red nail polish. So, <laughs> I love it because it's... A very classic red it's not orange red but it does have something that just gives it a little pop without making it tomatoey so it looks really good on olive skin tones like mine but I think that it would really look good on anyone I learned of this color from Hannah's friend Chelsea and she has a lot different skin tone than me but when I saw it on her I was like oh, what color is that because it just it brings out your skin so nicely so that's what I'm wearing and I like it with this shirt, because even though there's no red in this shirt, it just kind of pops. And last but not least, I have been using these for several years, but I just got a brand new pack, so I thought I would tell you about them, since they are always my favorite. Um, these are, they're called steno books, but I just, for some reason, I just love the format that they are. They're just like a really good size for me, um, for everything that I have to do. And I just open up a new package, and it comes with three, and... It's usually about $3 for a pack, so it's a really good thing to just pick up whenever you're out at the office store or sometimes even at the grocery store or wherever. Whenever you get inspired and you can't find your other notebook, it's always nice to have a brand new one there waiting for you, and you know that it didn't cost a lot of money so you don't feel bad. So these are just my very favorite and I love to have them around. Well guys, that is it for my March favorites. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like it. Tell me what you think about my favorites and other genres of things that you'd like to know what my favorites are. Um, I hope that you will come watch my hand soap video on Friday so I can show you how to make some really healthy and... Hey! Go away! Go on! She doesn't want to be in the video. She just wants to be next to the video making lots of noise. So, <laughs> really healthy and delicious smelling hand soap for really inexpensive. I hope you guys are having a lovely week and I love to see all of your questions and comments. Don't forget to write them in the comments box or tweet them to me or message them to me or whatever because I just love to hear from you guys so much. You can find all of that information in the info box below and also don't forget you can find 
all the information for how to find these items in the info box as well. All right, I'm starving now, so I'm gonna go eat some lunch and I will see you guys soon. Nope. She's only a hard liquor kind of a girl.